Davis right, and he's gone. Right, touchdown. Touchdown, Arkansas. Jarius Wright. Touchdown, Jarius Wright. Wright on the money. Wright with the right move. Touchdown, Hall. Jarius Wright with his 11th touchdown catch of the year. Mallet. Deep middle. Wide open. Jarius Wright trying to get his balance. If he can, he might take it. Breaks the tackle down the sideline. Got a block, and he's in. Touchdown, Arkansas. This is Jarius Wright, and you listen to the morning rush. You know, Darius, it's been 10 years since, 10 plus years since those games took place. But what's crazy is I can remember every single one of those highlights from Texas A&M to Mississippi State. Darius, thank you so much for making some time for us this morning. We're really looking forward to talking with you. I definitely appreciate you guys having me. And it's funny because, you know, I didn't get to hear, um, I didn't get to hear from the side y'all got to hear from, but I remember every play. It's the it's the it's the different dynamic between the the watchers, the viewers, and the actual players themselves. And and Jerry, so I'll be down at SEC Media Days, for example. And this is kind of the dynamic between the two of us. You were there as a player, as a representative in 2011. Coach Petrino decided that you were one of kind of the ambassadors for this team, and, and deservedly so. What do you remember about 2011, and, and just kind of the setup and? What you were feeling at SEC Media Days ten plus years ago? Well, uh, you know, it was uh, I was definitely proud. Uh, like you say, Coach Rashino thought I was definitely one of the players that he thought I sh- that he thought should go to SEC Media Day. So just uh, you know, just knowing that kind of let you know what your head coach think about you. But uh, you know, for my first time, it was a, it was a little overwhelming just seeing all the all the bright lights and all the media being there. But it was also a great experience. Um, it was the first time that I got a chance to get a suit. They took us to buy suits, so that was my first suit ever. And um, it was a good it was a good opportunity for you know a small town Arkansas kid. Jerryson, and I think back to that experience. Tommy and I were joking earlier this week between Jalen Catalan, Bumper Pool, KJ Jefferson. We were advocating for them wearing the the Arkansas Razorback suit that has hogs all over it. But I know it's going to be a competition between the three of them and others. Do you, did you feel like you were the best dressed at SEC Media Days back then? And, and who do you think will be the best dressed of those three? Uh, you know, I can't say I think I was the best dressed because I didn't, honestly, I didn't know anything about suits or wearing suits. And um, some of the guys I know that went with, with me didn't either. So, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't much of a competition between <laughs> us at the time. But I bet if, I bet if uh, we went today, it would be a bigger competition. Oh, and can you? But um, I say, I say, I say, KJ probably uh, kind of looked the best just because he's he's quarterback. So, <laughs> hey, can you imagine, it, 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 Jerry, in today's NIL world, where you can kind of go out and work a deal with a local store, Walker Brothers, or somewhere in Fayetteville like that? That get, some of the, I bet, I bet with NIL across the conference, you, you're going to see it go to another level this year, wouldn't you think? With NIL, I can only imagine. Um, <laughs> NIL deals are, are, are great, and you know, I was just thinking, you know, what if what if I got a chance to get an NIL deal back then? Uh, but it, it all worked out for me, and I'm glad these kids get a chance to make a little money off their name and likeness. So if you had NIL back in 2011, what, what would have been the first place that you like to eat or a place to get a, a sharp-looking suit, or where would have been the first business you'd have wanted to make a deal with? You know, it's funny. I ate a lot of fast food back then, so I'm just <laughs> looking at <laughs> But, uh, you know, now, now I'm smarter, and um, I know a little more. I'll, I'll probably definitely be looking for it. Um, car dealership vehicle. Yeah. yeah, I was talking to someone yesterday that uh, they were they were helping uh, one of the players get ready for media days and put them in a pretty sharp suit and said the cars they're driving up in today are a little bit different than the ones we saw players in in the past. Uh, I think you're right on the money there. So, yeah, the car is definitely a big thing. You didn't you didn't realize how important it was back then, but. As you get older, you realize a lot more. So, tell Jarius, us, I want to go, or go ahead, Tommy. I just got tell us what's kind of going on with you now, and get, kind of catch us up with with where life's kind of led you right now. Uh, so, as of right now, I'm currently um, I'm working at White. Uh, you know, he's a head coach down there, and he brought me along. Currently, OC working with working with receivers at White. Losing the case. Okay, I, yeah, we, we lost your uh, set, set, oh, okay. set, set, set. You were telling us you were at Whitehall and, and working yes, with Ryan. I'm, so. 
Yes, sir. I'm currently at Whitehall around Mallet. Um, you know, he's the head coach, and mm-hmm. uh, I'm the OC, and I'm working with the receivers there. And I've, I've been there since uh, basically the fall of spring. That's awesome, man. And, uh, Tommy, go ahead, because I know you had a question queued up about Ryan. Well, we were going to add, you know, and Clay and, Clay and I and you and Ty, we were talking, you know, we were going to talk to Jerry about being, working with Ryan, and, and uh, what kind of head coach is he going to become? He'd been at Mountain Home, working as the OC there. How's he settling into being a head coach, and, and how, how's that connection and relationship uh, being rekindled between you two? Um, I mean, you know, he, you could kind of see our, how, how good our relationship was on the field uh, when he was there. I know it was just a short but uh, when he was there, and we kind of just picked up right where we left off. So our relationship is great. Um, high, very high expectations for each other. The same thing to expect from me, and I know what to expect from him. So, uh, you know, there's there's no problems going going forward in that way. But uh, he learned a lot of great, I guess, head coaching things. I don't know the guy at Mountain Home, but um, he learned a lot of good things up there from Mountain Home. That he's um, kind of utilizing their Whitehall and you know I'm, I'm kind of new to the high school coaching game too so I'm kind of learning as I go. We're talking with Jerry's Wright this morning former Arkansas Razorback and now we just learned current Whitehall offensive coordinator and and Jerry's I know that you've been probably heavily focused on your football team this year but I, I want to ask you about this team because what I saw from 2010 to 2011 you guys for the first time ever went to a BCS Bowl there was a lot of publications on you heading into that next year what did you do you followed it up with the 11 wins and the only two teams you lost to were in the national championship so my question to you is how do you not get complacent? Arkansas is going to have a lot more hype heading into the season. KJ is going to have accolades, as is Jalen Catalan and others. Jerry, how did you guys not stay complacent, and what would your advice be to these young men that are going through the same process you guys did? Well, you know, um, that first year, we kind of kind of took a lot of beatings. And, uh, you know, even though the close games that we, that we lost, um, we remember every loss that we took. And we remember how that, how the, how all those losses felt. And the next couple of years, you know, we didn't want to, we didn't want to feel that feeling again. So all the guys bought into the program. We worked hard in the summer and we pushed each other, not just, you know, not just the coaches pushing us. We pushed each other to be better. And I mean, that's just something we wanted to do. So, um, not only do they have to buy in, they have to, everybody on the team has to want to win. And I think kind of what's undervalued during your years was the defense that you guys had. I love me some Alonzo Highsmith, Jake Beckett's the Little Rock guys, Tremaine Thomas and others. I mean, you guys had some dudes on offense. Everyone knows that. But you also had some competitors in practice that you go against every day. Arkansas's defense, I think, is going to be undervalued a little bit this year. How, how much do you think that side of the football helped you in y'all's success in 2010 and 2011? You know, a lot of people forget about um, a guy like Jerry Franklin, who basically led the SEC in tackles um, pretty much every year. Uh, so that's and like you mentioned, Tremaine Thomas, uh, our defensive line with Jake Beckett and uh, Tenarius Wright, and some of the big guys inside uh, like Jared Green and um, who, who we call Butch, which y'all might not know him as Butch, um, but. Uh, you know, our defense was very, very solid. And they, and if you could get us a stop, not only our defense, I forgot all about our special team. <laughs> uh, you know, with, you know, if you kick it deep to Joe, he could score at any time. And it's kind of a kickoff return. So, you know, every aspect of the football game, we were showing up to. And if you were the other team and you didn't show up to that aspect, we would beat you there. Jerry Clay Henry, I, I'm going to take you back to AT&T Stadium, uh, 2011 against Texas A&M, down 18 at half. And I, I don't know if there was, uh, other than one play that needed to be run in the second half, but they were playing cloud coverage, and they gave Jerry Wright the middle of the field. I'm talking about from the hash to the hash. Would you kind of? 13 catches for 281 yards. I've never seen anything like it. Well, you know, normally defenses um, make changes at halftime to stop what's working for the other team. But 
uh, for some reason, they thought a linebacker would be able to cover me down the middle of the field the whole time. Was there uh, ever so basically? I was about to say no. They ran the same. I mean, pretty much the same defense. Um, every time we went to the certain a certain formation, which put me in the middle, uh, they would go to basically like you say a palms or a two defense and leave the middle wide open. And if the linebacker couldn't run deep down the middle of the field with me, then it was going to be a touchdown every time. Well, I've, I've never seen anybody have more fun than that game, and. Uh... It was uh, the way they've got the press box. It's in the kind of corner of the sideline, and you just see the middle of the field open up, and there was there was Jarius running free. And I guess the quarterback just had to get it over the linebacker, right? You know, that, that game was really, really fun. Um, I know it wasn't fun at the time being down uh, 18, but being able to tell that story about coming back from down 18 at half, uh, you know, it makes it makes for a great story. So, what made your your passing game click? I mean, what what did y'all do in practice with Coach Petrino? And and uh, I know you you know you worked with Paul as, as receiver coach. What what made y'all special in the passing game to be able to just just cut up those zone coverages? Um, we put outside of like football season, we put in a lot of a lot of hours running routes. Uh, receivers, quarterbacks, uh, tight ends, also even the running backs. We put a lot of hours um, into that stuff. So whenever we did get on the field, not only that, in practice, we worked so hard. We worked as if it was game reps in practice. So when we did get in the game, uh, you know, it would kind of be second nature to us. And I think all the hard work we put in in the off season and in practice, it showed up in the, it showed up in the game when it was time. You know, it's going to be interesting. Coach Petrino will be back in Fayetteville this year. Have you thought about that game? I know you you'll be somewhere coaching football on a Friday night, but uh, would you would you try to get to that game? Uh, that's definitely one game I got planned to uh, try to make it to. Uh, you know, I know how it ended for Coach Petrino, but he he done a lot of great things for this program for sure. Well, you can just go through the record book and you start picking off names that played for him, and the, they're at the top of the record books. And I'm, I have a feeling they're going to stay there. I think you're going to be up there forever, Jerry. So it's pretty cool. You know, uh, it's it's funny because you kind of mentioned about uh, right before ACC Media Day. Um, you know, I, some of the records that I even broke, I didn't even know how. I didn't even know I was supposed to break the records until ACC Media Day. I kind of just worked hard for three years and uh, went to SEC Media Day and found out that I was pretty close to making a lot of records. Tommy, you got I got one more, but I'll, let, I'll slip it back to you. Uh, Jerison, we, we've had the opportunity to, to talk with uh, Traylon Burks and, and just kind of the, uh, the the dynamic of Warren, Arkansas, you, Greg, Chris, him, and it just it, it's insane. I, I know the Mark Jones quote: uh, "Warren Warren Arkansas is great tomatoes and great football players." That's a long time long time ESPN broadcaster. And and when you lose an All American like him, it, it was a little different for you guys because you guys had you Kobe, uh, Joe, and Greg all on one team. But last uh-huh. year it was it was Traylon and and kind of everyone else. Uh, what are your thoughts on the wide receiver core this year? Bringing in Jaden Hazelwood and and I know Warren Thompson's back and some others, but I mean, you're you're uh, was described by me by your teammates as one of the most precise route runners, one of the best hard workers. What are your thoughts on this wide receiver core that KJ is going to be throwing to in 2022? You know, it's, it's going to be very interesting. Um, we we have some, like you said, we have Hazelwood. Um, we got the other guy back from last year. Uh, we got some young guys coming in, like. I know Sintega, who should be able to help us early. Uh, but, you know, it'll still be interesting because, you know, you have to get out there and do it. So um, I'll definitely be looking for that group to, to shine. Um, the advantages are you do have a, a great offensive line and you have a quarterback who's, who has great experience and, and who can get the ball to you. So um, I'm definitely looking for some of those receivers to make a lot of plays this year. All right, Jerry, y'all have Warren on the schedule this year? We do have one on the schedule. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. 
That's, yeah. that's the game that's, that's just circled on the calendar. <laughs> I bet it's circled. I bet it's circled for Coach Embry, too. It's going to be fun. I, uh, I never – it's it's funny. I never thought I'd be getting the opportunity to go against my old head coach, but it'll definitely be a fun one. What a that? great man. Man. That's oh, yeah, good. great guy, for sure. He – He's taking some time to come on with us as well, and he's got some great stories about you and everyone else. Jerry's last thing from from me. We had we have callers every single day that we take. We had a caller earlier by the name of Eddie in Clarksville. Maybe you've heard of him. Maybe you haven't. He thinks Arkansas is beating Alabama this year, and I know y'all came out so close in 2010. You guys had him on the ropes, and it, it just fell just short. What does it take to beat Alabama? Is is the guy playing quarterback for Arkansas? You, you think he's got the tools to do that this year and finally beat him for the first time since 06? Uh, you know, I think our guy quarterback, he has the ability to do it. I mean, he has the ability to do a lot. The, kind of the sky's the limit for him. I think he showed us last year, uh, and with his first real opportunity to get a chance to play, I think he showed us that, that he can. he's going to show up and he's going to play football hard each and every day. And with the run game that we're building, um, you know, if we have a couple receivers step up, and also our defense um, stops the run. I, you know, I think this could be our year. I love it, man. I love it. Well, Jarius, again, thank you so much for taking time out of your morning to join us. Best of luck to Whitehall this year. Man, we actually used to play them in high school. I forgot they were in our conference. So best of luck to you and Ryan this year. And, yep, uh, tell Mallet hello. Pure class down there, Jerry. You, you, I know you're going to do great. This is a perfect place for you and, and Ryan, I think. Well, we definitely we appreciate that. And I appreciate you guys having me on. Right. Good stuff, Tommy. Remind me what is what is Whitehall's mascot? I, I, we played him in high school. And I, is it? The, it's I, not the, I'd be lying if I told you. But I, I was just looking here. I pulled up while he was talking. I, I have a, a file over here that I keep all the new conference classifications because it's changing this year. But Whitehall's in the same league with Pine Bluff. They're going to be there with Joe T. Robinson and Maul Mel. Uh, you know, those are some great programs right there that all uh, contend for for state championships in 5A. So uh, there's going to be some battles That's in that 5A crop, Central. That yeah, class. you got BB in there. You got Mills. You got Moralton. Uh, I mean, but Robinson's been really good at the 4A. We know Pine Bluff's history and tradition. Uh, so, th- yeah, this is going to be some fun games in that 5A Central with, with Whitehall in there with some schools. valonia has been uh, on the uptick. Watson Chapel's just down the road. So, uh, Ryan and Jerry is going to have some fun games, and then that uh, non-conference game with Warren. You ask about Clay that uh, that'll that'll raise some eyebrows that week and get some people keeping up with that game. Yeah, no, they've they've got some good players at Warren this year. I know yeah. Coach Embry was telling me about a young wide receiver that is just ultra talented. So they're the Bulldogs too, by the way, Ty. Bulldogs, Bulldogs. Yeah. Okay. Yep. cool. All right. So I mean, it, Jarris Wright is. Uh, he he would be the perfect guy to take to SCC Media Days just because of the class and the ability. You put those two together, that's the guy you want out in front of your Orders program. at Bet Online continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's Wimbledon Finals, Major League Baseball, the latest fighting news, and even next season's early NFL futures. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code BLE. E-A-V. That's B-L-E-A-V to get the bonus and get into the action. Bet online where the game starts.